Hello! Let's move on then to this next lesson on straight line and we're going to be looking at midpoints. So what is a midpoint? Well, even if you haven't come across them before in maths at all, you could probably work out what a midpoint is. Really, it's just... That's right, you got it. It's a point that's in the middle. So the midpoint of a line. The midpoint is the point exactly halfway between two points. For example, if we have this line here, we've got two points, there's going to be x and y coordinates. The midpoint is just going to be halfway along that line. So these two segments would be the exact same length. It is really easy enough to find the midpoint. Say you had like, the x value here was 6 and the x value here was 8. Well, obviously between 6 and 8, you've got 7. But let's say it's bigger numbers. Let's say this is negative 26, 25. And then this is 37, 104. How would you get the midpoint? It's a bit trickier. So what you have to do is you've got to think, right, well, let's deal with the x-coordinates first of all. So if you're given two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, the midpoint has an x value that's halfway between x1 and x2. As I said, if that was 6 and that was 8, that's obviously 7. If that was negative 105 and that was 17, it's a bit harder. But you know it's halfway between them. It's the same with the y's. If you know that value and that value, you know the y value of this midpoint is going to be halfway between them. So the way you can find it, deal with the x and y's separately, but you can average the two points. A lot of the time if people are talking about averages, they're talking about the mean. And the way you get the mean is you add them all up and you divide by how many you have. So you could add the x coordinates together and then you've got two points, so divide by two. So as it says here, to do this we add the x values and divide by two. And with the y's, you guessed it, you do the exact same thing. So you can add the y values and divide by 2. If you do that, you end up with this fancy formula here. So the midpoint, you add the x's and then half them to get the x-coordinate. And for the y's, you add them and half them to get the y value. Two examples then with that. So there's the formula. Let's say you want to work out the midpoint of 2, 8 and 4, 6. You could do this one just in your head. You could easily think, right, with the x's, what's halfway between 2 and 4? And with the y's, what's halfway between 8 and 6? But let's use the formula. Let's check that it works. So to work out the midpoint, you want to add the x's. So you've got 8, add 4, and then divide by 2. And with the y's, do 8, add 6, and divide by 2. Don't just jump to the answer. Maybe add in another line as well, just so you don't make a mistake. But if you add them, you get 6, and you divide by 2. Add them, you get 14, you divide by 2, and just double check that you would get 3, 7. You should be able to tell if your answer is right or not. Looking at the x's, well, yeah, 3 is in between them, 7 is in between them, so you know that's going to be your right answer. Okay? Example number 2 of 2. Find the midpoint of 5, negative 7, and 6, 4. So this time, you want the midpoint. Again, we're just wanting to use the same formula. Add the x's, and then half them, and then add the y's, and then half them. So 5 add 6 gives you 11. Negative 7 add 4 gives you negative 3. We'll still to divide each of them by 2. 11 divided by 2. You could just leave it as 11 over 2 if you want. You can leave it as a fraction, the same with the three halves. Uh, or you could just put it into a decimal. If it goes into a nice simple decimal, you do that. If it gives you a decimal that keeps going on, probably just leave it as a fraction. But here, 11 over 2 is 5.5 or 5.5. Negative 3 over 2 gives you negative 1.5. And that's how you would do it. Instead of giving you a page out of the book for this, I've just got questions here. So this is the exercise. So work out the midpoint between each of these two points. If you do that, pause this now, try working your way through it, and then I will give you the answer in about four seconds. So pause it now. Adam, make sure you're pausing it, I know what you're like. Okay, so the answers now, let's get them. So this time, the answers for A, you should have 5, 6. Check these, mark them as you go. You should have 5, 6 for A. For B, you've got 5, 1. 
For C, you've got two negative four. For D, you've got two zero. For E, you've got negative 1.5, negative four. For F, you've got 5.5 and 4.5. For G, you've got eight, four. And for H, you have zero, zero. That is your answers. How well did you do? Brilliant, you deserve a high five. Yeah, well done. And that is the questions, which is the ones on the slide. Good job.